Hey everyone, Spud here from Spud's Games. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video, I'm going to be running you through an RGB MUX method of a BG3R Sony Trinitron chassis. Stay tuned. There's a bit of a backstory to this CRT. Um, I had a CRT that I had in the garage that I was going to mod. I actually turned it on and found it had vertical collapse. It was a CRT that I'd picked up for free, 68 centimeters. I wasn't gonna muck around with it. They're just too big, too heavy. Now I do have a recycling center up the road from me. Um, so in the back of the car she went uh, and off to the recycling center. Now, uh, I do have quite odd luck at this recycling center. Um, I tend to drop something off but come home with three or four things. Not supposed to. Um, but you know they're they're pretty flexible there as long as you, you sort of not um, I suppose as long as you do it inconspicuous then then they're not too worried about it. But as it turned out, as I was dropping my CRT off, uh, the Ute showed up and there was an older gentleman popped out and he had this on the back of his Ute. Now straight away I noticed the Sony sign on the back. Um, quickly had a view at it and I said, just mate, hold it there for a sec. I went and checked the service manual BG3R chassis. Beautiful, this one can be RGB modded. Went back over to him and said, mate, does this still work? He's like, yeah, I had it on this morning. Wife's got a new TV. They told me to chuck this one out. I said, you're not going to chuck this out. You're going to help me put it in the back of my car and I'm going to take it home. So lucked out in that respect. I got rid of one CRT that I was going to mod, which was a Panasonic. And in return, I got this nice Sony to do. What I'll do now um, is I'll pop behind the camera. I've got the back off the CRT already, which is good. Uh, we'll run around, we'll have a look. I'll quickly run you through how the mod's gonna take place, um, as well as also some good features of this CRT. So here we are, here's the CRT itself. One good thing about the BG3R chassis CRTs is you'll see there through the speaker, you can see the speakers there. Uh, this has stereo sound, um, you can see underneath there. Um, so it is it does give out a nice sound now this unfortunately does have a couple of little marks here here and On the other side there, but there's no marks on the screen itself And these funny enough you could probably tell where the guy had it on his ute and the walls of the ute come up and He sort of had it resting against it, and this is where it rubbed Between um, the travel between his house and and the tip itself or the recycling center So that's what those lines are but thankfully because the screen is recessed back in away from that And it didn't actually hit the the tube itself, which is good so just under the, show, uh, under the, the tube here, um, we've got this little section, which it gives you your stereo headset jack there, as well as some composite inputs uh, and some program volume buttons as well. Uh, so that's one good feature. It has that functionality on the front panel. Let's come around the back. As I said, we've got stereo speakers. So this is the back. It's a really clean unit, actually. I'm not going to have to blow this out at all. It's not dusty at all, which is good. Uh, I have tested the CRT and it works fine. But the other good thing I love about modifying these CRTs is this black panel. This panel where everything sits is actually separate from the box. So what that means is I can actually take this off, put my holes in here for the RGB mod and do everything here. I don't have to mount them on the box and if I ever want to take the back cover off, um, then I don't have to worry about trying to unplug stuff because it's all mounted on this back panel, which is part of the, the chassis itself, which is really good. One thing you'll notice, these flat CRTs, you'll notice a heap of convergence strips. And the reason is the, the screen at the front is flat, where you know a CRT traditionally is, is looking for a sort of rounded tube. So I'm not gonna lie to you, flat CRTs, particularly the Sony CRTs, do have geometry issues. But you can usually fix them pretty well. Um, you know, they're not, that's not too hard to fix as long as you've got some of these convergence strips. I'm not sure if I've got any left after the last one I did, but um, we'll see how we go with just the standard um, geometry and convergence. We'll see, just see how we go with that. But so, in a nutshell, um, for the RGB mod itself, we're going to be using the MUX method. This does have a teletext board, which is, if I can just zoom in uh, a little bit here. Uh, hopefully that clears it up a little bit if I can get my hand in here. So the teletext board is just this board here. You see there, next to that little transformer with a yellow label. So we're going to be using the RGB headers for the teletext board. We're going to pull that teletext board out. Um, but it's not as straightforward as just using the RGB um, of the, the teletext header. 
uh, as some chassis are. It's, um, you do have to use the MUX method because it does have different voltages on the, on the um, OSD, the jungle, and also what you need for RGB. So uh, I, I have, I've done MUX methods before, but I haven't actually videoed it. So I'm gonna do that today and show you guys exactly how it's gonna be done. But essentially in a nutshell, what we're gonna do, we're just gonna have our RGB here. So red, green, blue. Uh, looking at the RF thing, we've got plenty of room above it. So probably up here somewhere will be the blanking switch. Um, to switch it to RGB. The other good thing about this TV, it does have component. It's only 480i, 240p component. It's not um, 480p. But, you know, it, it's handy having component inputs there anyway. People might say, you know, what's what's the point of RGB modding if you've got component? Well, my Mega Drive doesn't output component. My Super Nintendo doesn't output component. All those older consoles don't output component. Yes, you can get converters, but why would you get converters when you can do it traditionally with RGB? So once again, we'll just come around this side and have a look. As I said, everything's really clean. Um, and it's nice to get a CRT in this shape, really. You know, you don't spend an hour or two having to dust it all out and pulling it apart to get rid of you know, big clumps of dust. So it's going to save me some time. Um, and that time will be used, obviously, getting the RGB mod done. So oh, we'll just, what we'll do is we'll just touch off those people who are interested. The tube itself, that's it there. It's obviously a Sony tube. The make and model number there. So that's it. Turn the camera off now, we'll get stuck into the RGB mod. So here we are in front of the main controller IC. You see down here we've got RGB and blanking, which is YS. I'm not sure what this I is, um, but the ones we're interested in is YS RGB. This is where the OSD gets fed out from. Now, over here we've got Mark and Syntax's um, MUX diagram. This is common for all CRTs. And down here we've got a resistor table as well, which we're going to be using in a minute. So just walking through the steps here in the notes, they've got factor resistors in OSD and blanking lines. We need to find out what they are. So we come down here, it's actually 3.9K, that's what we're after, which is this resistor, this resistor, and this resistor. These two aren't actually labelled, but I know from experience all three are the same, and they're all going to be 3.9K. Next note here, factory voltage dividing grounding resistors have been removed uh, from RGB and blanking lines. Now, the blanking line note there just refers to if we're using a SCART, which you can see over here. Oh, I'm not, I'm using RCA, so I'm actually going to leave the blanking line grounding resistors in. Uh, but we definitely need to move, remove them from the RGB lines. So when we go searching for them on the diagram, that's this one here, this one here, and this one here. They all need to be removed. We do need to pay attention to them. Um, they're 470 ohm resistors, you can see there, there, and there. Up here, the next note, diodes here are optional. I never put them in, uh, I never had an issue. Um, I spoke to Mark, he doesn't usually put them in either, they're just, I'm not sure what they're there for, but I never put them in. We come over this side, we need, when we're adding in the resistors now to our external RGB lines for our consoles, we need to add in some resistors. Those resistors are, val are calculated on this table below. And they're calculated via, when we went down here, this 3.9K, I said, you know, we need to pay attention to what that is. We come here, 3.9K, no diodes, 560 ohm resistors. So when we're terminating our RGB lines, we need to make sure we put some 560 ohm resistors here. Mark's got 1K, that's just a general value. Um, but you need to calculate it as per in each individual CRT. We also need to put a resistor in here, and that matches the grounding resistor. It says removed, but I didn't remove them, but the grounding resistor here is 470 ohm, which is over here. Um, and yeah, I, I, that's how I do it with RCAs and never had an issue. I don't worry about terminating blanking to ground either. Speaking with Mark, it's not necessary if, you, not necessary if you're not using SCART switching for it. Now, when we look at the teletext header, if I was looking at it um, from where that would sit in the scheme of things, it actually sits here. So all this here will have to be made up on VeroBoard. Um, but yeah, if the Teletext header was actually drawn in, it would be sitting here. So that's it for a description. Uh, I'm going to make up some VeroBoard now for this particular part of it. Um, so there'll be a 460 ohm resistor here. There'll be 560 ohm resistors in series, and then there'll be 75 ohm resistors to ground. So here's the bit of variable board I made up. Uh, for looking top left there, red comes in, 
there's a 560 ohm resistor just remember with the vero board rails travel uh, horizontally uh, not vertically so the red comes in through a 560 ohm resistor uh, and then out on the right hand side but you'll see there there's also a resistor tied down to that bottom row of holes uh, and that's just the 75 ohm grounding resistor so I've done all three the same for red green and blue and the bottom row of holes is actually the ground so I have one ground coming in and then I have three grounds going out for the three grounds on the RCA. So to get the Teletext board out, uh, it is a little bit complicated. So if I can just zoom in, hopefully this will work. Underneath the Teletext board, and I can't really get it to zoom in closely there. Where that yellow wire is runs underneath, there's actually two connectors. If I can just get it to zoom. Oh, we just had it. See that little connector there? There's one up a little bit further. So that little black thing you can see there, that's a little latch. So you need to pull that towards me, or I need to pull it towards me, and lift it up, and I need to do that for the other one. Now sometimes it will, with a bit of force, just pull straight up. But what I'll do is I'll go ahead and get this out, and then you can actually see what I mean. One thing I forgot to mention is you'll have to pull this bracket out. So this bracket... Let me just get it here. Sorry for the bad camera angle. It's sort of, you can see the screw hole. It's sat on, so it's sat on like that. And it kind of held the Teletext board. Um, if I'm just getting this in the right spot. The Teletext board's actually moved. I'd have to get over like that. It kind of held the Teletext board in place. So you just undo the screw there and just lift this bracket out so you can now get access to the Teletext board. So those of you who don't know what it looks like, this is the Teletext board that I pulled out. That's just a little bit of insulation underneath. That's not part of it. And you can see here, if I can get this in focus, the connectors are actually labelled red, green, blue, blanking and ground. They're the ones we're after. We're actually going to reutilise this connector. I'm going to desolder that one, the one on the left there, and reuse that to plug it back in. And you'll see what I mean when I do that. But that's going to come in handy. Where it, where it come out from, I'll just come around here. You'll see the two black connectors there. Maybe I can zoom in close enough. Oh, just Not quite. You can see where it come out of. Red, green blue blanking and ground on the right there we're actually going to plug that back in just that connect i'm going to desolder it from the board and plug that back in and reutilize the pins for my solder joint so that's all it is to pull how how easy it is to pull the teletext board out and that's where we're going to be plugging into the circuit so one thing if you haven't already got one that i highly recommend are these desoldering guns now this they're not the cheapest thing in the world but if you're doing a lot of desoldering you see my smoke actually hit a bit of plastic on mine that's why it's smoking um, they're absolutely brilliant, especially these um, Harke or Hack or whatever you want to call them. I use this PR301, absolutely brilliant for desoldering and hopefully, I'm doing this one handed, but you can just see, I've already done one. Hopefully you'll be able to see, if I can just zoom in, you can see, let's zoom back out. You'll see how easy it is, I've already done one hole there, it looks a little bit uh, crappy there, but I can assure you that it's nice and clean. I'm just going to line this up, I'm going to try and do this one handed. And see, you see how easy it is. So, where is it? There. You can see how easy it was to desolder that. That took me all about 30 seconds. I've desoldered all them. And I'm going to pop the connector out, and you can you'll see what the connector looks like. So that's the connector. You'll see now it's been desoldered. Um, it's giving me those pins to connect to. So the bottom of that will plug back in. I've got those pins now I can use to solder to. So I've got the CRT upside down. Now I do have a towel underneath, as you can see it's laying face down, just so I can get to the access to the bottom of it, to the circuit board. Now, as you saw there, I spotted that 5 volt. Where are we? There we are. Which was IC100. And that's it there, that little 3 pin. I seen, you can see next to it there, hopefully if I zoom in slowly it will pick it up. You can see on the left there it says IC100, middle pin, I um, just spelled it out, made sure it was going to where it should be going, is the 5 volt side. So I'm just going to turn the TV back over now and just test that, just to make sure that is 5 volts once the TV is turned on. Here we are. You can see I've got my multimeter there. It's going to be crazy. I'm not sure what it's doing there. Uh, I've got the TV on. Let's go around the front. See the TV's on. I'm just going to measure 5 volts now. I'm just going to pick up a ground and hopefully, which I'm just going to use one of the RCA shields and hopefully we get five volts 
So I've just got one of the RCA shields here. And you can see there, 4.84 volts, 4.85 volts. So that's fine. That's what I'll be using for my 5 volts, blanking. I know. So I've drilled the holes at the back. Um, as you can see here, got the blanking switch in. I'll just come around this side. You can see the terminations there. The white ones are obviously the blanking cables. Um, you can see the PCB there I've mounted as well. And you know, it's all in all pretty neat. Uh, I could probably could have tidied up these cables a little bit better if I planned ahead a little bit more. But you know, it's not too bad considering. Um, all in all, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, I suppose, becomes the, I suppose, comes the testing. And, uh, well, let's see if this thing works. So, let's give this thing a go. Let's turn it on. See how we go. Boom. There you go. I've got my RGB Pi plugged in. I've got sound coming through, which is good. Um, as you see down the bottom there, utilising that. It's very, very dark. Ah, oh, that might be because blanking's not on. Let's go turn, <laughs> turn the blanking on. Hang on a sec. Ah, there we go. Beautiful. It's um, really happy with that, and as you can see, uh, a lot of times if you don't do the MUX method on these, you, the, the menu was actually washed out. You won't be able to see that video one, or it would be very, very, um, very faint. But that looks fantastic. You can see how nice and thick those scan lines are. Really good colour. Stereo. I think the sound's pretty good on this. I'll turn it off. So all in all, pretty happy. So there it is, another successful RGB modification on this nice Trinitron. Uh, there are a couple of things to probably note. Um, this, you, you probably need to do the MUX method on this one. Uh, if you went just straight ahead and tapped your RGB lines into the teletext, then you're gonna have brightness issues. You're not gonna be able to see your main menu. As I said before, go back to one of my first videos that I did, you'll see the issues there. You know, If you don't do it properly, via the MUX method, then you're going to have brightness issues for sure. And uh, I can say that the, the white picture you're seeing at the moment, the picture and the brightness is set at about 50%. So it's 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 pretty neutral. Um, you can see the menu nice and clear in RGB mode as well. So all in all, a really successful RGB mod. It is a nice CRT, nice and clean inside. Um, but unfortunately, as I said, I can't adjust the geometry until I have a working remote. Might do another video on that, but it's essentially going to be the same adjustments that I made on the previous Trinitron video. Um, these ones are a little bit more wonky, uh, but you know that's just because of the flat screen on the front of it. So that's it from me, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been informative for you. Please don't be scared to give it a shot. If you've got any questions, throw them in the comments below. Um, I'll try and list everything that I used throughout the modification. If I've missed something, let me know, uh, and, I'll, and I'll try and answer the questions or I'll let you know what I use to do a particular step in the modification. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and until the next video.